let's just back up a minute and look at this whole thing historically, right? It's when when did ECM start? Nineteen sixty nine. Okay. So back it up to like nineteen sixty eight. Okay. What's going on in jazz in nineteen sixty eight? I mean, think about it. You know, Miles is starting to go electric, right? There's a whole bunch of bebop and post bebop. I mean, fusion is it's about a year or two away, but it's coming, you know. And and this whole other realm of music, you know, it's not one realm, but it's sort of a direction. It doesn't really appear anywhere. It's being played, it's being investigated, but it's and you know, Manfred just gets this whole thing going. Out of nothing, we kind of take it for granted, you know. That's a pretty big deal. And to me, uh, you know, everybody's going to look at it their own way, but to me, it's kind of what we're talking about. I mean, he didn't say, well, I'm going to start a label that's going to be like Blue Note. Hell no, you know. Or like Columbia. What He had an idea of what he wanted to do, you know. And, you know, the people he went after, especially in the early days, it's really indicative of, of where he was coming from, you know. Uh, Gary and, and Keith Jarrett and uh, Chick Corea and all, a lot of those early records. Ralph, Ralph Towner, John Abercrombie, they were all pretty early. Um, and just to stop for a minute, I, I actually was thinking about this last night. I will say I did not prepare <laughs> for this interview, but one thing did occur to me. Could I imagine what the music and the jazz scene would be like oh. if, if Manfred weren't on the planet? Right. Hello, you know, real different. Yeah. Real different. Yeah. That's, I think that's significant. He's the only producer that I've ever been in a studio with who was sincerely and seriously interested in what your instrument sounded like. What was the sound of your instrument? And he would walk out in the studio and listen to your instrument. And that became what he was going to, that's what he wanted to record was the sound of your instrument, not his idea of what a bass should sound like or not, but what was the what was the instrument actually saying? What was happening with that? He had ears, and he's the only producer I've ever ever worked with who had ears, musical ears, could really really hear, and that's unique. I mean, that's plus the fact that he you know, is very diligent in terms of quality, the quality of the sound, the recording, um, everything about that. He's, he's the only one. Uh, with the available technology that's there, you know, that contrasts that with a record I did years and years ago with um, uh, Donino Horta, Mm. The guitar player and Billy Higgins and Tonino Horta uh, wanted me to do this recording with him, so we both agreed. And said, okay, we'll do it. And so we're setting up in the studio, and I'm warming up with, on the instrument. And the sound man recorded it, you know, and said, "Come on in, and want to see what you think about the quality of the sound and the bass and all like that." So he went in the studio and I'm listening and he says, what do you think? And I said, um, well, it, it just doesn't sound like my instrument. And he looked at me and he said, well, what would you like? More lows, more mids, more highs, more? I'm thinking, no, I'm not asking about that. I, what I'd like you to do is get the sound of my instrument. He didn't have a clue. Manfred, you'd never ask that question to. <laughs> you wouldn't have to to begin with. He'd already know exactly what was supposed to be there. And there's a whole different world that uh, he he came in up came up in. 
Yeah, that's interesting because when <clears throat> when John and Abercrombie and I were starting to prepare the material for the 39 Steps record, which was the first one I did for the label, I mean, you know, John and I were talking about this and that, and he said, you know, one thing you don't have to worry about is you're going to get absolutely first-rate sound. I said, yeah, of course, you know. And that's that's a that's yeah, that's right. a that's a big relief. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. When you go, then you know at least I don't have to worry about that. 